Good evening and welcome to prayer for Tuesday, October the 27th. As I mentioned in morning prayer this morning, we're going to try something a little different now with each prayer instead of having that long, rather boring reading from the Concord. We're going to put in uh, two little devotions uh, from Martin Luther, one a longer one and a shorter one. Both of them together are actually pretty short. Uh, each one will deal with one verse of the Bible, two, something like that. I think you'll find that that's probably more edifying use of our time for prayer, uh, rather than trying to keep up with what's going on with the Concord articles so long that it takes days and days uh, to read the whole thing. And by the time you're done, you forgot what you heard when the article started. Uh, so we'll try this. I think, uh, I think this will work out much better for us. We'll give it a shot. Anyway, with that, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven, from the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused, and went and put him in prison, until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. And our first devotion from Martin Luther is based on Galatians 5.17. What your spiritual nature wants is contrary to what your corrupt nature wants. They are opposed to each other. Galatians 5.17. Believers can be deeply comforted by Paul's teaching. They have both the corrupt nature and the spirit in the same body in such a way that the spirit reigns and the corrupt nature is subordinate. Righteousness rules and sin serves. 
Not everyone is familiar with this teaching. If you think that believers must be completely flawless, and yet you feel deeply flawed, then you will be consumed by sorrow and will despair. Whoever recognizes and makes use of this teaching will discover that even the worst will work out for the best. For when your corrupt nature entices you to sin, you will be motivated to seek forgiveness of sins through Christ. You will want to grasp the righteousness of faith, which you wouldn't normally regard or desire. Meanwhile, Christians should keep the wickedness of their corrupt nature in mind so that they are encouraged and motivated to believe and call on Christ. At such an opportunity, Christians become skillful artists and wonderful creators. They can create joy from sorrow, comfort from fear, righteousness from sin, and life from death. When they restrain their corrupt nature in this way, make it their servant, and subject it to the Spirit. If you are aware of the desires of the corrupt nature, you shouldn't despair of your salvation. Though you will be aware of these desires, you must not give in to them. The more you grow in Christ, the more you will sense this conflict. Anger or sexual desire may still be stirred up in you, but you must not allow them to rule. Sin may arouse these desires, but you must not give in to them. Where I had a little bookmark. Okay. And we join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant what we ask in faith we may obtain, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our second little devotion from Luther tonight is on based on Titus 3.5, uh, titled, Daily Sin Means Daily Repentance. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. Titus 3.5 In this life on earth, it is impossible for us to live without any sin and defect, even if we have already received grace in the Holy Spirit because of our sinful, corrupt flesh and blood. This does not cease to be active in evil lusts and desires against God's commandments until the grave, even in the saints, 
even though after they have received grace, they refrain from and guard against sin and oppose the evil lusts, as repentance requires. Therefore, they also still daily need forgiveness, just as they also daily repent because of those remaining defects and weaknesses. They recognize that their life and works are still sinful and would merit God's wrath if they were not forgiven and covered for Christ's sake. For that reason, Christ has established his kingdom on earth, which should be called an eternal kingdom of grace and always remain under the forgiveness of sins. Upon those who believe it, it is so powerful that even though sin is still stuck and so deeply rooted in their flesh and blood that it cannot at all be swept out in this life, nevertheless, it shall do no harm but shall be forgiven and not imputed, as long as we remain in the faith and daily work at suppressing the remaining evil lusts, until they are entirely blotted out through death and decay in the grave with this old maggot sack, so that the man may rise completely new and pure to eternal life. And that is from uh, Luther's works, volume 77, in case you care, uh, from his church postal uh, sermon for Easter Tuesday, uh, which was based on Luke 24, 36 to 47. So let me know uh, by emails or comments. Uh, I think you can comment on Facebook, but you won't be able to do it on YouTube. Uh, if you like these shorter devotions, if they're a little bit uh, more easy to digest and more to the point and useful for us for evening devotion, I think we'll keep doing these for a while. And with that, let's join together in Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.